Welcome to Catch and Go. It's a blessing to come to you again. I've been speaking to you from Matthew, Matthew 16, verse 26, 27, and 28. I've been speaking to you just not too long ago. I've been speaking to you from Genesis 25. I've been speaking to you from 2 Corinthians 11, 2 Corinthians 8. I've been speaking to you from Proverbs 3, verse 9 and 10. I've been talking to you about 7779. Seven, uh, I've been talking to you about the great deception and complete judgment. I've been talking to you about Matthew 7, verse 21 and 23. I've been talking to you from Revelation 2 2. I've been talking to you about 2 Thessalonians, 2 Thessalonians 2 2, the falling away. I've been speaking to you from 1 Timothy 4, right? I've been speaking to you from different chapters and things that God has been speaking to me to speak to the body of Christ. I've been telling you some of the things that God spoke to me back as as early as 2008, uh, 9, and even before that, uh, 2008, the Lord was speaking to me things. I've been speaking to you about Wormwood. I've been speaking to you about so many things. I want to speak to you about this chapter so that you see how God think that the things that the Lord is revealing to me or the chapters in which He's wanting me to go to and He shows me even before Sometimes, even before I can get my day started, the Lord is always already bringing and revealing what's the next chapter or the next passage or the next message, or even if there's a rhema word or a prophecy to bring to you or bring to the body of Christ on catch and go. So I want us to turn to this chapter and you will see the consistency. There will be, a, you will see that there is consistency in what I've been speaking to you and what the Lord has been telling me to speak to you and you would know that this is from the Lord, all right? As the Lord, as I said, His wrath is 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 as is going into a whole different level. And he, he, as I told you, the measles is broken out, the flu is broken out, the coronavirus is broken out. So many things is broken. Locusts is broken out. But I've been talking to you about God exposing men and women and leaders right around the world, not just the body of Christ, but people that are governors and senators and, and things, and God's revolutionizing the, the, the entire earth, and God's revolutionizing leaders in the nations, and God is tired of dictatorship, God is tired of so many things, God is tired of, of those that are in Ephesians 4.11, and then ministers squeezing the daylights out of the poor, right? God is tired of so many things, right, that people are saying that are unscriptural, and God is tired of prof, so-called prophets Men and women going on YouTube being copycatters, I call them copycatters, in sensationalizing things on YouTube, and you have to be careful in these last days. So let's turn to Mark chapter 12, and I want to speak from Mark chapter 12, and let's let's start with verse uh, number 14, and I want to I want you to listen to me carefully. All right, what the Lord says here. And even when the, they were challenging Jesus, I, I, I want to I make sure that you understand why uh, the Lord had me to speak uh, on this subject while I'm in catch and go, while I'm flowing. Uh, I think there was a few telecasts ago that the Lord, as I'm flowing in the spirit, the Lord brought this out. I want you to, let's pick it up at verse number 14. Uh, that's Mark chapter 12. That's Mark chapter 12, verse 14. When they had come, they said to him, Teacher, we know that you are true. He's true. And care about, and care about, you are true and care about no one. For you do not regard the person of men, but teach the way of God in truth. Is it lawful to pay taxes to Caesars or not? That's where I want to stop for a minute. Remember a few uh, telecasts on Catch and Go, a few telecasts ago on Catch and Go. I said that while I was flowing in the spirit, God said that he was going to expose many people that had avoided, that have been avoiding declaring or under declaring their taxes. And the spirit of God took me to this chapter and brought me, brought revelation to me that night after we had done our telecast catch and go, the grace of God gave me and brought revelation and told me that he wanted me to speak on this, on this subject. And 
they said to Jesus, let's read it again, verse 14. When they had come, they said to him, Teacher, we know that you are true and care about no one. For you do not regard the person of men, but teach the will of God in truth. Is it lawful to pay taxes to Caesars or not? Shall we pay or shall we not pay? Look at what he says in verse 15. Shall we pay or shall we not pay? <laughs> and those are the things that you've been doing. Those are the things that you've been saying to yourself. Shall I declare it or shall I not declare it? Shall I just keep it and not say anything? Remember that God, whatever is hidden in dark, God will expose it and bring it to light. All right, that's very clear. And in verse 15 says, shall we pay or shall we not pay? But he, knowing the hypocrisy, said to them, why do you test me? Bring me a dineros that I may see it. Now listen, he know that they are full of hypocrisy. And the, the, the thing is that there are men and women in the body of Christ, in leaders, leaders, pastors, teachers, evangelists, apostles, prophets. You have a ministry, but when it's time to do your, your taxes every year, you under-declare. You don't, you don't declare what you've actually earned or what your ministry has earned. There are... Christians, that God has blessed you in the marketplace and you're not writing off everything. And Jesus says in verse 15, watch what he says. Watch what he says. It says in verse 4, 15, they said to him, shall we pay or shall we not pay? But he knowing the hypocrisy said to them, you see, you see, God is warning men and women and people that are in government, or senators, or governors, or mayors, or even people in the bodyguards, God's warning people, period. That's, that's deception, okay? You bring in your tithes, you bring in your first fruit, you bless the church, you, you help the church out, but every year when it comes to taxes, you, 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 you avoid declaring all of your earnings. So it, what, what you've done for the Lord, you have actually not, not made it invalid, but it, it, it somewhat, it doesn't validate, or there's no validation to, 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 to the spirit of transparency or the spirit of sincerity. You do, you help out, you bring your tithe, you come to church, but when it's time to do your taxes, you want to you you get, get a big return, but you don't declare everything. And God says here, they asked him that question, shall we pay or shall we not pay? And he said, knowing that there was testing him, testing the integrity of the spirit of God's heart and his integrity, challenging the integrity of his son, Jesus Christ, and ever. They're challenging the integrity of the Holy Spirit. They were challenging and testing how sincere and transparent was he, how was he? And Jesus, knowing, said, you full of hypocrisy. Let's continue. So they brought it and said to them, whose images and in the scriptures is this? They said to him, Caesar's. And Jesus answered and said to them, render to Caesar's the things that are Caesar, and to God the things that are God. And they marveled at his saying. You see, Let me say something. You are sealed with redemption. You are sealed with the blood. You are sealed with mercy. You are sealed with grace. You are sealed with holiness. You are sealed with righteousness. You are sealed with the, the Savior, the King, the eternal Abba Father, who we cry out, Abba Father, the true sons and daughters, sons and ship of the Lord Most High God. The Lord just said to me something. He said, share what I told you a few days ago. I want to share with you what the Lord said to me. I was praying, and as I was praying, and after I have done my time, the Spirit of God 
said to me, Satan can destroy just about everything in you. He can destroy everything. He said, but when it comes to your temple, he cannot destroy your temple. Watch what God said. He cannot destroy your temple because that's where my spirit is. The Bible, I, I heard I heard that great cloud of witness. You think the Lord opened my ears and I heard that great cloud of witness, amen? Say amen. They were rejoicing. They, I just heard that, okay? I'm not making things up. The Spirit of God, our Father, Jehovah, said to me through Jesus, Jesus channeled it down to the Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost told me, okay, while I just had done my time, or I believe I was still doing my time, let me correct that. He said to me, Satan can destroy, the adversary can destroy everything in you, but your temple, he cannot destroy your temple because that's where my spirit is. And the Bible says that our bodies are temples of the Holy Spirit. You want to shout and give God a big clap and a big, big uh, clap offering. Listen to what he said to me. The Bible says that our bodies are the temple of the Holy Spirit. We wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and rulers of this dark age. The enemy can wage a warfare against you. He can come at you. He can hit you from every angle, but he cannot touch your spirit. Let me say this again. Let me say this again. He can hit you from every angle, but he cannot touch your spirit. Because the Lord said to me, he can do whatever he wants with you. Well, however he wants you, but the Lord said to me, the word temple, and he said, but when he comes to your temple, he can't destroy your temple because that's where my spirit is. That's what the Lord said. And then he brought up, while I was praying, he says, is not your body the temple of the Holy Spirit? And I was so blessed when I heard that. Let me tell you, are you in a warfare? Are you being challenged by the enemy? You know what you ought to tell them? I can care less, Satan, what you do. Because my body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. I know who I am. I am a child of the living God. My body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. Amen? Praise God. And the Lord, you know what I say, Daddy, and I said to you, praise God. Oh, somebody got to pop up your popcorn. He said to tell you, everyone that's watching Catch and Go, he said, you are sealed with victory. <laughs> there is victory in the name of Jesus. There's power in the name of Jesus. There's power in the blood of Jesus. You are sealed with supernatural, powerful redemption, the redeeming power of the blood of Jesus that was shed on the cross, brought about and sealed you once and for all with victory. Tell somebody, you ought to tell somebody, stop living like that and start living a victorious life. Start thinking in a victorious way. Start thinking in a positive way because you are sealed with mercy. You are sealed with grace. You are sealed with righteousness. You are sealed with holiness. You are sealed with victory. This is what he told me to tell you. And Jesus answered and said to them in verse number 17, Render to Caesar the things that are Caesar's, and to God the things that are God. And they marveled at him. Then verse 18, Then some of the Sadducees who said there is no resurrection came to him, and they asked him, saying, Teacher, Moses wrote to us that if a man dies, man's brothers die, they leave his wife behind and leaves no children, and his brother should take his wife and raise up his offspring for his brother. Now when there were seven brothers, the first took a wife and died. He left no offsprings. And then you know the rest of the story. Because I want to stay on track with avoiding paying your taxes. Look, you said, but I'm living right. You probably lived right for 364 days. You probably lived right for you lived right for that whole entire year. And then when January or February or March comes, or when it's time for you to do your taxes, however they do them, or what month month they do them in different parts of the nations, different parts of the nations, they do their taxes at a different time. 
Look, I want to tell you, you hinder all of the blessings and you block and create and allow the enemy create obstacles in this journey and blessed journey in which you have just been a blessing throughout that whole year. But when it comes to taxes, you don't declare the full amount. I want you to turn your Bibles with me to Matthew 22. I want you to go to Matthew 22. And I want you to understand that, that the Spirit of God wants you to know that he's warning people. And he just reminded me what he told me in the telecast a few telecasts ago when he brought this up out of my spirit. Talk to them about there are many who are avoiding their taxes. He said, remember I said, I'm catch and go. He said, to tell you, you are going to go to prison. The government is going to find out, or let's put it this way, God's going to expose your deeds. Because a man and a woman of God is to walk right and upright and blameless before the Lord. Not cheat your government. Not cheat anyone. Now let's go to Matthew 22. Verse, let's pick it up. Verse 15. Matthew 22, verse 15. Then the Pharisees went and plotted how they might entangle him in his talk. Entangle, snares, traps. And they sent to him their disciples with Herodotus, saying, Teacher, we know that you are true, and teach the way of God in truth. Nor do you care about anyone, for you do not regard the person of man. Tell us, therefore, what do you think? Is it lawful to pay taxes to Caesars or not? I'm in Matthew 22, reading verse 18 now. But Jesus perceived their wickedness and said, Why do you test me, you hypocrites? Show me the tax money. So they brought him a denarius. And he said to them, Whose inscriptions? Whose image and inscriptions is this? They said to him, Caesar's. And he says to them, Render therefore to Caesar's the things that are Caesar's and to God the things that are God. When they heard that heard, had heard these things and these words, they marveled and left him and went their way. I want to tell you, as I begin to close, remember the Lord said that it's better for you that while you still, the Lord keeps bringing it up. You heard me go, mm -hmm. the Lord keeps bringing this up. While you still got breath, while you still exist, while you still walking on this earth, while you still get up in the morning, go to work to make a living, you're still breathing, you need to make things right with God. And you need to make things right when it comes when doing your taxes. It's not me telling you because you know what the Spirit of God is basically saying? Avoid from going to prison. It's not me. It's not me. The Lord is saying His wrath is closing. Can I say what He showed me? He opened up my spirit. I saw a door, okay? The Lord opened up the seer's eyes. I saw a door was open, and he slammed shut it and closed it and said the word close to me, and he said to me, Matthew 25, the midnight hour, the ten virgins. Five had oil. Five didn't have any oil. Suddenly, the five that didn't have oil were caught off guard. And God is not sh now showing me, as I close, I'm catching go, talking about taxes. God showed me 1 John 4, 1. Many prophets, false prophets, have gone into the world. Many false men and women, which at one time were never never moving in that direction. Everything they did in the eyes of God 
was authentic, was true, was full of sincerity, full of transparency. They were living right. They were declaring all of their taxes. They were declaring the right amount. They were, they were living right before God. I will tell you what the Lord said to me just now. Are you ready? The Lord says, we are to respect the laws of every country or God will consider you a lawbreaker. Why don't you? Have you ever heard some sermons before messages? I believe, I, I believe, I, I can't recall, but I think that I did mention one time that we, wherever we travel, whatever nation we go to, we have always respect the laws of that country. And perhaps God spiritually and in the physical realm sees you as a lawbreaker. You know, many years ago, I, can, I cannot remember, uh, but there was a man of God that spoke one time that he was speeding down the highway. And in the highway, there's, you can go 70 in the U.S., I believe. There's other, the speed limit. And he was going, going more than the speed limit. And God spoke to that man very clearly and said, you are breaking the law. So he slowed down. Even, even we ought to respect the road signs. The speed that we're driving in. <laughs> we are to respect the laws of this of every country. And you are under declaring your taxes. And God sees you as a lawbreaker. That is not only deception. But as a lawbreaker. You are hindering all the things that God has seen you do for his kingdom or how you've been a blessing to the people in the body of Christ. You hinder all that because when it's tax time, you don't declare your taxes correctly. I hope that you don't make, take it personal. I'm just speaking from the heart of God. True prophets will speak only from the heart of God. True prophets will speak on purity and holiness and the things that will help build one another and strengthen one another in the holy faith. The Bible says that we are to lift each other and strengthen each other in the holy faith. We are to edify one another and iron sharpens iron. I hope that my message on taxes and tax evasion and avoiding taxes, I hope it do you some good because I believe that I'm going to get a lot of comments. I'm going to get received a lot of comments just saying thank you for this area of my life. I will begin to correct so that I can be right with God and right standard, being blameless and holy and upright before the Lord. The Lord bless you, catch and go. Remember to subscribe to our YouTube channel. And as I've reached out to you many times in my last few telecasts, go tell a friend about catch and go. Tell them to subscribe to our YouTube channel. We'll just be so, we'll be so blessed to just have you do that for us. And remember, keep us in your prayers as we pray for you. And always remember, Diamonds of Lord Ministry, the people in the upper room, we will always speak from the integrity of the heart of God. The Lord bless you. Catching up.